what is CDS access controls or what are the authorizations or the securities needed for CDS views. CDS access controls are defined as CDS rules leveraging the data control language or the DCL. If we use our common sense, then CDS access will restrict users access rights to specific data records of the CDS model, which is written in the first point. So what does the access control do? It restricts the user's access to the data. But we cannot explicitly say that we, we can restrict the access of the users. In principle, we can also give unlimited access to certain users based on the roles. However, CDS roles usually contain conditions under which the access to the data of the protected CDS models is granted to the users. These access rules may be composed of various access conditions and based on what conditions is satisfied based on the authorization object, the user can see the data or the data is visible to the user. With visibility, I mean the data can be consumed by the user. So the consumer may be a report, it can be an ABAP program or it can be the direct access of the CDS view or you can be using or accessing the data through some front-end uh, technologies like Fiori and SFA UI5 applications. The authorization objects which I just uttered, they are the same as those which we use in the transaction based uh, PFCC based authorizations. Most of us know that we do not have access to all the transactions. We get access to the transactions based on certain roles which in turn is based on the authorization objects which we have been assigned to. So with this side knowledge, let us see what is the second point. The second point says that uh, CDS rules leverage the data control language, but this is not absolutely complete. Usually or in, in actuality, the CDS access control also needs DDL, that is the def data definition language. The CDS view or the CDS entity view which is being created, that is the data definition language, which in turn is called in the data control language. So we, in the subsequent slides and, and in the exercises, we will see how uh, it, it can be done. So, so if you want to do CDS access control, then we have to use both DCL and DDL together. The third point, CDS can provide unrestricted access to selection criteria. So we already discussed about it. So CDS access control is not only to restrict, but also give unrestricted access to certain users based on the roles. CDS role contains conditions under which the access to the data of the CDS model is granted to the users. That means the visibility of the CDS data can be controlled based on certain roles which the user have, just like what we used to have in our or what we have it in our transaction codes and CDS, CDS authorization objects are the same as the PFCG based authorization objects which we have been using in the T codes. Before we go to the next chapter, I would like to throw two terminologies that is start authorizations and instance authorizations. So what does that mean and what is the difference between a start and an instance authorization? From an authorization point of view, an end user should only have access to the functions and data that he or she really needs for fulfilling, fulfilling any specific task or any specific business roles. Accesses or security or the authorization always follow the principle of least privilege. This means that a user should only have a minimum set of authorizations. He or she should only have only that much of liberty what is needed to carry on a duty or the role which she is assigned to. So the authorization can be split into two ways. One is the start authorization or the functional authorization and the other is the instance or the data record level authorization. Let me try to explain the difference between the start and instant authorization based on this example. In principle, employees of sales and distribution department 
should be able to create and view sales orders. In contrast, employees from the HR or the Human Resource Department should not be able to use the corresponding sales and distribution views and functions. So this can be achieved by not granting the HR employee any access to the applications of the sales and distribution department. That means the HR guy should not have access to the T course like VA01 or VA02 or VA03 where we create the sales order. They should not also have access to the tables like VBAK or VBAP which has the sales related information. So say I am a HR guy and when I log into my system, when I try to go to the sales related view, I should be stopped. So I do not get the start authorization at all. That means I do not get the, um, the authorization to even look at the applications. So there might be some applications which are uh, related to sales and uh, sales and distributions. So there might be some Fury apps. There might be some SAP UI5 apps which the sales and distribution team always use in their day-to-day -day life. But if I log in, being an HR person, I should if I click that app, I should be given an error saying that you are not authorized. So this is called start authorization. I do not have the ability to even look into or uh, start the application itself. So there I am protected by the functional role. So now coming to the instance authorization. So we will take the same example, but now within the sales and distribution department, we we'll look into different employees. If the sales department is structured according to the different sales regions, say sales employees who care for European customers should be allowed to access only the European data orders. Okay. However, the sales employee who are responsible for the USA customers will not be allowed to look into the orders of the European customers even though they belong to the same department. So they both belong to the SD or the sales and distribution department but one set of employees can look into data specific to Europe and the other set of employees can look into data specific to USA. In this case the Europe employee and the USA employee they both have the same start authorization the same start authorization that means they both can click on the applications and they both can look into the sales and distributions reports but at the granular level at the data row level or at the instance level they do not have authorization to look into certain set of data so they will be able to see only the USA data or the European data depending upon what role they have in the sales and distribution model. I hope you understand or you understood what is start and instance authorization. I also told you that and the CDS access control has both components the DCL part that is the data control language and also the DDL that is the data definition one. We'll see all this in action in the subsequent slides and exercises. So let's go to the next session.